The PGA Tour and its Saudi-backed competitor Live Golf, along with Europe's DP World Tour, have agreed to merge in expectation of creating a global entity for the game of golf. The agreement, which is not yet a definitive agreement, ends the hostility between Live and the PGA, along with the litigation between the parties. And it calls for the giant Saudi sovereign wealth fund, PIF, which created Live to invest significant, I'm told, what will be billions of dollars uh, into the new entity. That's over time. The PGA, which is currently a not-for-profit, will contribute its commercial business and rights into a new for-profit company and will gain or will continue to have governance rights over that new entity. I had a chance to sit down with the key players behind the deal, PIF Governor Yasser al Ramayan and PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan. Of course, just seeing these two together makes one wonder, well, how in the world did this come about? Listen, I think today is a it's a historical day for the PGA Tour and the game of golf. Uh, and it's a historical day for the PIF and the DP World Tour. And you're right. You know, there's been a lot of tension in our sport over the last couple of years. But what we're talking about today is coming together to unify the game of golf and to do so under one umbrella. And David, the way that we're doing that is we're creating a for profit LLC. Uh, that the PIF is going to invest in alongside the DP World Tour. Uh, and together, we're going to move forward uh, and we're going to take efforts to, to grow and expand this great game and to take it to new heights. And so what's happened today, and to your earlier question, is we've recognized that together we can have a far greater impact on this game than we can working apart. And I give Yasser great credit for coming to, the t t coming to the table, coming to the discussions with an open heart and an open mind. We did the same, and the game of golf is better for what we've done here today. Yasser, give me some sense here as to how this came about, how the first call was made, uh, and how you were able to find common ground, again, given what had been a particularly uh, difficult history between the PGA and, uh, and Liv. We met in London. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we uh, had a lunch, followed by uh, uh, the next day a round of golf, then another lunch. We had discussions. We covered everything. And one of the things that I said then, um, had we met two or three years ago, it, the impact that we will have in the game of golf would be lesser. Why? Because it, it would be something small. But the way we're uh, doing uh, our partnership, it's going to be really big in many senses. We will have uh, both the uh, LIV and the BGA Tour in addition to all of our uh, assets. And we will be investing in the growth of the game of golf and doing many new things that I think will have a better engagement from the players, the fans, the broadcasters, the sponsors, everyone else. And hopefully to even give a better access for uh, more and more people to the game of golf. The way we would love to uh, make the game of golf very much accessible, just like any other sport, just like football, basketball, any other sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't have right now and today. Right. Um, well, Jay, from your perspective, when you, I mean, first yeah. you had a meeting, Jimmy Dunn obviously had this meeting, and it yeah. kind of went from there. Give our viewers now a sense as to the structure of this. You've talked a bit about the fact that you're a nonprofit, but you're going to create a for profit. Correct. You're going to merge, essentially, correct, yes. and be a for profit company, correct? Yes. So the, C the C6 still stays in place. Uh, and out of the C6, we'll continue to operate our tours. Uh, we'll put our player retirement plans and assets there. Um, so that stays in place. I think it's very important. One of the things that's important to both of us is every single week when we're playing tournaments, we're making a huge impact on the communities where you know, we're invited guests. That continues. Uh, and at the C6 level, you take the assets of the PGA Tour, uh, the PIF's ass assets uh, and live in with the Asian Tour and the DP World Tour, take all those commercial assets, drop them down uh, into that for-profit LLC. This is early. We're going to go through an evaluation of all or evaluation of all of the businesses. And the PIF will invest 
in NUCO, and importantly, as Yasser is quick to point out, there'll be an additional investment and growth initiatives. And that's what's really exciting here. Yes, sir, we're, we're talking about potentially billions of dollars being invested from the PIF, correct? Correct. Over what period of time? That's an excellent question. So the first step is today. Uh, the second one is the, you know, the definitive uh, agreement. Then we are creating the board. And the governance of the whole thing is we will evaluate every proposal that will come to us at the board level. So whatever it takes, that's how much is the commitment that uh, we are committed for. Do you e expect to consolidate all these other entities as well? Are you creating one entity for global golf, essentially? Exactly. That's, that's the idea. And uh, the potential there is really big. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the uh, size of uh, golf, monetary wise it's about 100 billion uh, today and i think the the growth is uh, is there and i think we can working together we can have a faster growth rate than um, uh, the way it was for the past you know 10 or 20 years david if i could add i think sure. when you look at when you look at the game on a global basis there are now more people playing the game outside the U.S. than playing right. inside the United States. Okay, you look at everything that has transpired in terms of the forms of distribution, um, top golf, and all the other ways that people can interface with our sport. There are now people off course, more off course participants than on course participants, and that combined audience in the U.S. is 48 percent under the age of 35. Reaching a younger demographic at a time when the sport has never been more popular and doing so by coming together to collaborate at this point in time, that's where we see the commonality and purpose, and that's where we see this huge opportunity.